All right, so this channel isn't a political channel in any sense, but I want to give my two cents on Andrew Yang and how he was able to, I guess, position himself so well in, in these democratic debates, right? And into these campaigns, able to raise so much funding and all that, and able to stay relevant with all his marketing, you know, and without even like a brand recognition, right? So I wrote down notes because to organize my thoughts. First off, Andrew Yang. So to get things started and to you know start creating that buzz, he campaigns about UBI, which is giving everyone a thousand dollars a month, you know, for twelve months from the age of eighteen plus to I don't I don't know if there's an end date, I don't remember, but yeah. So from eighteen on, no, thousand dollars a month, that creates a buzz, right? But you know, with something like that, people are going to think, hey, that's just a gimmick, right? There's no substance behind it. But, you know, that's just something he'll worry on later. But in the beginning of all of this, you know, that's that's the hook. That's the thing that creates the buzz. So now with that generating, he starts hitting all these podcasts, Right. I'm talking Joe Rogan, H3H3, Ben Shapiro, Breakfast Club, and so many, many more podcasts, video ones too, on YouTube. So he understands where the attention is. It's like almost he's as if he's you know taking, you know, a play out of Gary Vee's playbook. So he understands where the majority of the t attention is, where it's going to be, and that's you know these podcasts. So even if you're not into politics but you watch joe rogan or you listen to him you're gonna be like hey who's andrew yang and so that starts creating you know a snowball effect things to talk about he's on there and because it's an hour long he's able to now speak clearly and elaborate on his ubi policies and other policies you know for 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 that fact so now he's no longer a gimmick candidate but now he's become, you know, okay, like this this entrepreneur candidate, no background on politicians, but you know he has solutions to the problems that are at hand now, right? So now he, he's starting to create some sort of that that trust, that like slow branding, and that kind of like foundation in his campaign. Like okay, like we have something to work with here, right? So he starts hitting you know podcasts. He understands where the attention's at. And just recently, I just saw him on TikTok too. But it wasn't from his account, but a different account. But still, like, he's generating all this online demographic that you don't see a lot of in, you know, polling recently. I haven't seen it. Maybe it started, maybe it started with, you know, Barack to Trump a bit. But Andrew Yang's really hitting this hard. So that's pretty good marketing right there you know hitting all these like demographics you know, free expo i don't know if it was free but like this is like pretty good exposure right and now <clears throat> he has this math slogan which is pretty good it's like he's borrowing it from trump and then he's uh, spinning it to make it different so instead of make america great again he's saying make america think harder so now you kind of have this this kind of transition where it's like, okay, so he's taking something from Trump and he's making it different. It's almost as if he's going to take the office from Trump and he's going to make a difference. Like you see that kind of like transition, that parallel kind of thing. So now he's starting to work with, you know, it's subtle, but like an unconscious subtlety and transition where it's like, okay, they're similar you know, Trump and Andrew and, and the fact that they're entrepreneurs, but they're different because this guy's now, now he has like these solutions that are a little bit different. Maybe we can you know, start working with how he's going to solve these problems that the Americans are facing, right? So now, now he's starting to hit that kind of like emotional side along with facts subconsciously. And now because of all that you know work he's put into the foundation of things it starts to snowball and that snowball effect gets him into the debates and now this is where 
He's so smart in his marketing. And if you study marketing at all, or have done, you know, on Shopify or any of that, he just pulled one of the greatest funnels that I'm pretty sure anyone would have loved. He gets on stage and he offers thousand dollars to 10 families, you know, and all I have to do is just sign up for that email completely free. Just write a story. And now boom, you have really dedicated fan base or, you know, voters who are vying for that, you know, thousand dollars, you know, passionate, who is willing to, you know, just even if you're not super passionate, you know, just that chance, that lottery effect. Now you're in his funnel. And now he's able to hit you over and over with all these like email campaigns and over and over and over again. So that's pretty crazy, right? I don't know how many emails he was able to get from that, but that thing that he, that's why he was able to, you know, stay in and then shoot his funding up. Cause now you have people who are like, all right, now I know who he is. Now I understand his campaign a bit more. And now I kind of want to support him. And then, I think another thing he does really well is his transparency and his policies, which, you know, makes him exposed, but he's able to control the narrative because, you know, all his policies are there. It's not hidden. You know, he knows, you know, his answers to each policy given. And so there's no really su surprise, right? So he's able to control the narrative into talking about, you know, what he wants and he just knows his weaknesses and strengths really well. So that makes it so you can't really go after Andrew Yang. You can, right? Attack his own policies, but it's not like he's hiding anything there, right? It's like there. So if, if anything, I think he's still adding more to his policies. But yeah, just small solutions that in the end, you know, add up. And it just, I think that's what people are seeing. And I'm not saying like, you know, go vote for him or anything, but on a marketing standpoint, like he's, he's doing a lot of things that are very fundamental, but I don't know why other politicians aren't following his footsteps because this is insane at what he was able to do. And then the meme culture also, things getting viral, him being able to crowd surf, you know, appear at a rich bryant concert you know all these like meme content and that's what you know really snowballs i think it happened with trump too right he got meme culture you know, andrew yang is really pushing for this all the supporters and that's what creates that buzz it keeps things going and so even if you're not you know into politics or know anything about it if you see a meme about andrew yang you're just like okay who is this guy and that will just lead you further and further down the funnel and so i think that's why he was able to get to where he is in such an efficient and quick manner and then able to you know be stable in his polling you know consistency is with all these fundamental marketing tips or marketing you know <laughs> just all simple stuff that's just very effective and i just don't understand why other politicians or ask are, are like wondering why like he's like even the media is like they don't understand why he's able to do what he's able to do but if you just look at what he did then you know on paper you're just like oh wow this makes sense right so that's just my two cents if you have any other thoughts on why you know andrew yang was able to get so far ahead in the polling and everything like that leave them below i love to hear more about it because this is great. You, you can see why he's an entrepreneur. Because he understands you know, all these little nuances when it comes to marketing.